Hey guys, well, welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. Today, uh, one of my little projects is this is the uh, parking brake, and I've got it unbolted from the floor just to make it a little more accessible and, and a little easier for you to see it on the camera. And one of the things we need for the modern stereo going in this um, car is a way for it to recognize when the parking brake is set and not set. We could probably fairly easy get by with just grounding out the lead and you would think the parking brake was always set, but I don't know what other features that might defeat. And since this car has so many um, cameras and, and other features, we don't want to bypass it over the value of a switch. So what we're using is a uh, micro switch with a pin. This one has normally open and normally closed uh, contacts, and we're going to just use one set. So if you buy these in singles, you, you might spend seven, eight to ten dollars a piece on them. Um, I buy them in packs of ten and twenty, and so maybe they run me half that. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but uh, the, what we're going to do is we're going to mount this, and there's two mounting holes in here. And I, I went and got some number four, some three quarter inch and uh, n number four screws, machine screws. And so we're going to mark this and drill two holes in the, in the cadmium colored plate there and get it on the same angle as the handle when it's down. Well, hopefully you can see this exactly, but when the plate, when it's all the way down, this plate won't actually hit the button. It just misses the button. It basically, the plate, the black plate here is about the same distance as it is from the edge of the button to the edge of the switch. So what we're going to have to do is once we get this mounted in place, then we're going to add an additional little plate off of here that, that will trigger the switch. We just need to make sure we don't, you know, interfere with anything, but essentially we have this tooth here that we can move with the button. And we just need to be able to get in here where this can all hit the switch as it's going up and down. So now to make this a little easier to film and to actually work on, I took this out of the car. But what we're going to do is mount this switch uh, at the same angle as the arm here and mount it into the cadmium. And I'm going to use some number 440 screws. And this plate is plenty thick enough. If I wanted, I could probably, and if I have a tap, I may uh, just drill the hole and tap it, screw it straight into the plate. If not, I'll drill through holes and then I've, I've got some nuts there too. Then what we need is something to trigger on the switch. The thickness of this plate is not enough to actually get down there and trigger the switch itself. So what we're going to do is put add a little thickness on here so that as this so as the arm comes down, it'll actually push the switch and close it. So that's the, the little project. It's really not that big a deal. Um, we don't have any way to run screws through that to you know because we're, we're going to get into this backing plate or the the plate with the teeth on it um, so what i'm thinking i'm going to do is probably just grind a little bit of this paint off and tack weld my little trigger bracket on there uh, which is another good reason to get it out of the car uh, we have a boot that covers all of this all the way up to right here so all of this is covered anyway so we can tack weld our little switch bracket on there or the the trigger bracket on there and then touch up the paint and it'll never be seen again after it's put back in the car so let's go ahead and get this switch mounted and then we'll make the part that's going to trigger the switch all right now we need to mark those tiny little holes and i don't have anything that's going to go through there and mark that um, pencil or pen wise but what I do have is a little bit of dicum we're gonna just blue this up Make sure we have more area than we need let that dry for 
a minute or so. Now I want the switch to be fairly close in proximity to this arm so I don't have to have a big bracket hanging off of it. So we're going to get it close. I've got it parallel to the black part of the arm and then I have this little transfer punch and I just found one that fits the hole exactly the right size. I'm going to mark that hole. Now I'm going to I'll get a center punch, make that a little bigger. We're going to drill that out for the 440 screw, get that one in place, and then we'll mark the second one. Um, if we try and do them both in one shot, good chance we'll be off just ever so slightly and it won't bolt up correctly. Okay, so this says use a number 43 drill. Okay. Now, 440 is a tiny little tap, so I'm hoping that we can tap this without too much risk of snapping the tap. Yeah, it seems like it's going to work pretty well. And the trick here is take your time. Always make sure you're going back and cutting your chips, because it would be very easy to snap this little bitty tap. And if we do that, we just make more work for ourselves. Just remember, those threads are very fine. So if you, uh, if you feel that starting to bind at all, you are much better off to go ahead and back the, the tap out and clean it all out. You know, that's part of the reason for using the oil is to for it to help it clear chips, but sometimes it's just not enough. Um, you know, on the finer thread, small diameter, and it's just not worth the, the problem of breaking a tap off in there over the extra 30 seconds it'll take you to clean the threads out by, by removing it all the way. So we're all the way through now. Probably wouldn't matter which way we run the screws, but or which way we run the wires rather, but I'm gonna run them all the towards the back. Okay, that snugs down. I'm gonna make sure that the switch is parallel to this black part with the handle all the way closed. I'm going to transfer my my bolt hole again. out it gives a pretty good one get this hole drilled we'll get it tapped and I'll get back to you okay so the switch is mounted and I was able to mount the screws are three quarter inch long go all the way through that plate um, so then I just whipped up a little bracket because as you can see, we've got about an eighth to three sixteenths of a gap between the black bracket, this part, and when it's all the way down, the switch isn't in yet. And we need it to make contact when the parking brake is all the way down. What we're gonna want is when this is all the way down, it makes contact with the switch and turning, like if we had a parking brake light, uh, then it would turn the light off when the parking brake was all the way down. Um, in our case, what we're really using it for is to let the radio know the parking brake is set or not set. And so when that goes on, the, the radio will get a signal that the parking brake is no longer set. So I also don't want to leave this little bit hanging out. So just take, mark that, cut that off around the corners a little bit so there's nothing to snag. And then I put a hole in our little bracket and I'll mark this area and probably just right in there. And I can see that pencil up close. I don't know if you can see it in the, in the camera or not. But uh, I'll mark that, take this over and weld it on and just do a little rosette weld in there. And that'll be it. You know, so all I gotta do is take off a little bit of paint, clean this up when we're done, and spray it back with a little bit of gloss paint for, gloss black, for uh, after the, 
boot and everything goes on, you won't be able to see it anyway. So let me go ahead and get this trimmed up and welded on, and we'll get back and look at it again. Well, there you have it, guys. That's it. Switch installed, little bracket, threw some spray paint on it. Um, it goes all the way up and down. Switch connects. This is the common terminal, and then uh, normally, this one is normally open and then normally closed, and it's labeled right here in the red. So we'll run one of these to ground, and then one of these two to the uh, to the switch up for the or to the wire for the stereo system, so that uh, it'll trigger when it's all the way down. It'll realize that the parking brake is no longer set. So basically, any click above. Right there, that and on, it thinks the parking brake is set, and you can uh, do whatever the stereo uses that function for. Same kind of thing if you were if you were wanting to turn on a light uh, when the parking brake was set, it would be the same kind of deal. You could go from ground, and, and usually you don't want to when you got this much metal around something. You don't want to go to a hot source you, or you know a positive type source. You want to go to a ground source and trigger your light off the ground rather than off the 12 the positive side and that just means that if if one of these was to ground out somewhere with all these moving parts or pinch the wire you're not going to get a short you're just going to get the light stays on all the time or the light never comes on you know if it cut the wire or whatever so anyway um quick little project and i'll get this reinstalled in the car and get wired up and we'll move on to the next one Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you again next week.